All right, the Olympics have started, and of course, that means there's controversy with Team USA, a bunch of prima donnas that they are. Uh, and the, 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 the issue now is, how in the world did Jason Tatum not get into a game against Serbia, and why didn't Steve Kerr play him? Instead, he played Derek White. Anyhow, they, they beat Serbia by like 90, uh, you know, outside of an opening little uh, salvo in which Serbia went up 10 to 2. The game was never closed. And joining us now from Dulles Airport is our basketball insider, John Fanta. Johnny, how you doing today, buddy? Greg, much like the Americans yesterday, I'm flying high in the airport with you this morning. I'll tell you what, uh, after that slow start, the United States, I know you're a big USA fan. They made you proud yesterday, Craig. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Not really. Uh, I, like, I like Steve Kerr as a human being. I do a lot, all right? I don't like him as a coach because he doesn't do anything. He sits on the sideline and watches Steph Curry make threes throughout his coaching career, and that's not hard to do. And he exposed himself yesterday. Walk me through how you can explain after a game, you know you're going to win by 20 or 30 points because you know, we're just so much better than everybody else, how Jason Tatum doesn't play a single minute in that game, and your first defense of that was, I didn't like the matchup. Well, outside of mm. Jokic, you're being a problem for everybody, which we acknowledge. Mm -hmm. Tatum's not going to guard Jokic, of course, of course. Uh, position by position. What possible matchup is there that Tatum doesn't dominate against Serbia that Derek White does? Yeah, there is none. There is none. There, there, there's really no words to uh, fully explain how Jason Tatum doesn't play in the game. I, I that. That's inexplicable, but look, I think that they'll overcompensate now in their next game against South Sudan on Wednesday. I think you're going to see him play among the most minutes of anybody. Maybe he even starts for Devin Booker if Kevin Durant doesn't start after his marvelous performance yesterday. That, that one was, was very curious. Now, look, we talked about this last week, and we said when Kevin Durant becomes part of this team, yeah. because he missed all of training camp and all the exhibition games with the calf injury. There's going to be an odd man out. But when I said that to you, Craig, I didn't think that that would mean that Jason Tatum, an NBA champion, a world champion, who, yes, did not play great in the exhibition games, only averaged about six points per game. His impact was minimal. I didn't think that it would mean that we wouldn't see him at all. That one was, was strange. I think you'll see Tatum play plenty on Wednesday. And look, not every player on this team could have taken not playing a minute in a game. Jason Tatum's mature, though. He, you give him that. He's mature and he's calm. He didn't cause drama off all this stuff. Yeah. He could have been a prima donna and caused drama. He did not. That's not who he is. He's kind of boring. Yeah, my, my gut, though, is it on John, is that he knows all the cameras are on him. He has a great public image and is also a champion now that whatever gripe he had, and he is entitled to be pissed off, uh, he did behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. Because Steve Kerr went from, right. I didn't like the matchup to, I'm an idiot for not playing a meeting. The messaging changed at some point from what he initially said to what he's now saying. And that's because I'm sure at some point, Jason Tatum said, why am I here? Like, what? again, I know I'm surrounded by great players. And I'm not saying I got to play, you know, 40 minutes. But why am I here? Well, but but this is, but, well, you're you're there to, to win gold. But you're on a team that, the, the way this team was constructed, when we talked last week about, about how I thought Jalen Brunson should have been on this team, it's because a lot of the players on this team do the same thing. Now, Kevin Durant, right. nobody expected that yesterday. I mean, Steve Kerr couldn't have even expected that. For him to come off the bench, didn't partake in any training camp or any exhibition game. And he had never, listen to this one, Kevin Durant in his NBA career has never scored at least 20 points and a half and not miss a shot. That's the greatest half of his professional career, wow. all games included, <laughs> right? Uh, yesterday, that was out of nowhere. That played a part in why I Tatum did. did not play. But but yeah, you're asking the question, why am I here if you're sitting uh, on the bench the whole two hours? I mean, it was... It was definitely weird. There's no doubt about that. But, Craig, where, I'm, where, where I'll play with you a little bit is, look, if I'm orchestrating an NBA bench, Steve Kerr and Eric Spolster are my first two choices. Steve Kerr's going to gonna bounce back from, from this in regards to Tatum and play him more Wednesday. At the end of the day, all you want, 
All Victor Cruz wants, all I want, is to see the United States win gold. And if they do that, Steve Kerr, like he's won five NBA championships, will have done his job. You're judged by whether or not you win the whole damn thing. Good, Vic. He's absolutely right. John, I'm, I'm looking at their group, right? Group C, I'm seeing the teams that they're in there. When is USA going to get challenged? Is it after the – it's not until the next stage? Like, when is it going to get a challenge? They got South Sudan, Puerto Rico, and Serbia. Who's going to challenge this basketball team? Nobody in their group. Yeah. I mean, us three could check in on Wednesday. Uh, I, 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 Yeah, I'm confident. I mean, I might be better going to retrieve pool cap in the pool <laughs> uh, based on what I watched the last hour. That guy, I think I could follow in his footsteps. But – uh, I, they're not going to get tested in this in this pool. They're going to win these games by at least 20 points, or at least they should. South Sudan has their full attention after the way that exhibition went, that one-point game that, that really the United States was on track to lose. Uh, LeBron James is playing out of his mind right now. You can tell that he wants this to be his last word at the Olympics, and he wants to win that last goal. The Americans are not getting tested in the group. With that said, with that said, you guys know this, when you first – get hit with adversity real adversity how do you respond this team is going to at some point get hit with some level of adversity how they respond from that it might not be until the semis or the gold medal matchup with france it might not be until that point but they are going to get punched in an elimination game they're not going to get touched in the group no way no yeah. how and then of course you have the obvious ass kissing that goes on with lebron james which i'm still trying to figure out you know, LeBron James is almost 40 years old. So, I mean, a freak athlete, right? And a great basketball player. Not, not, that's not you know, up for any type of conversation. But Jason Tatum, and by the way, Choka Burton didn't get off the bench either uh, in yesterday's game. So those guys are sitting on the bench. Choka. We as Choka Americans Burton. have a 20-point lead with about three and a half minutes to go. And I see LeBron James on the court. And I'm like, why the mm -hmm. hell is LeBron James on the court? And then my son said to me, because they're trying to get him a triple-double. Yep. So, uh, yes. once again, despite this being the greatest collection of American basketball players, a guy with all those championships as a coach, they are still currying oh. favor to LeBron James, and he's still treated differently than everybody else. Well... When you've been doing it as long as he has been and you are the flag bearer and you've controlled this league for the better part of the last two decades, set, setting a trend with super teams and whatnot, LeBron James is going to receive the best of the best treatment. There's no way to change that. And when you go for 21 points, nine assists and six rebounds, I'm not going not gonna to fight on it. Now, I, don't, I also think, Craig, when we say they're trying to get him a triple-double, uh, let's face it, LeBron James is trying to get a triple-double. Sure. He knows how what his figures are. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Steve Kerr is going to tell him to sit down? That world is never going to happen. He <laughs> played his tail off yesterday. He had a swing where he had a steal and a slam coast to coast. He woke them up when they got off to a very sluggish start. He's LeBron James. There's no change in that, and he was great yesterday. But to me, the biggest revelation of Sunday was just how good Kevin Durant was. And it makes yeah, me think in the great. NBA, what, why, why can't Kevin Durant be like that every game in the NBA? Well, why, because why you're, playing, be that you're way? playing against you know, better talent, uh, which is the obvious answer. Like, you know, uh, Serbia, despite uh, having you know, one of the greatest play basketball players in the country, you, know, like you watch that game. And I don't believe the point. I know you got to hop on a plane to go to Louisville for TBT, which is on FS1, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, here's, you know, it's funny. I was talking to, you know, Basketball Jones, who is the most formidable basketball guy not named John Fanta in the country. And he goes, here, if you watch the American <laughs> offense, right? And here's why it's so frustrating for all the other countries. You're talking about the greatest shooters on the planet. That's it. And a lot of their offense is just pass the ball, until a guy is an open shot. And let's be honest, we're going to make 70% of those open yeah. shots because they're the greatest shooters on the planet, right? That is a great point. I mean, it's the, be it's the best point, I think, of our conversation because here's the thing. Yesterday, Serbia was within four late in the first half. Yesterday, Serbia did start the game on a 10-2 run. But what Serbia couldn't compensate was when they're up 20-14 to 14, and Anthony Edwards comes down and hits a three off a high screen. And then Kevin Durant comes down the next possession and knocks down a three. So for me, you know, for, for me, that, 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 that tells you, look, it doesn't matter how much you scheme, how much you scout. Right. They're unscoutable. Now, with that said, they don't run a whole lot of stuff. 
I mean, that's where when, when we say who's going to beat them, who can compete with them? Well, look, if you do have an, a, a bad shooting day, it's basketball. These are the best shooters in the world. But if you were to have a bad shooting day, if Kerr and his staff don't do a good job with rotations, they have a luxury of riches, but what if they don't do a good job with rotations? I still think Anthony Davis should be starting over Joel Embiid. I think it's clear as day Anthony Davis is the best front court player on this team. I don't know how Joel Embiid is still starting for this team. He got booed yesterday he terrible, uh, because yeah. he, picked playing, he picked playing for the United States over France. Look at the plus minus. I mean, it's clear as day that Anthony Davis should be playing uh, the most minutes on this team and should be starting. The sluggish starts are one big problem. For this team going forward, they have to avoid the slow starts because if you get off to a bad start against France and that France crowd gets behind the French even more, that's where you could be staring at some major adversity. But you're right. They have the best shooters in the world, and it showed yesterday. Now, they're not going to start 10 for 14 <coughs> from three every single game. They were out of their minds shooting the basketball yesterday, and that started with Durant. When he came in and got that hot, Serbia had no yeah, hope. Yeah, he was 5 for 5 from behind the arc. Uh, a little bit shorter, FIBA, than it is in the NBA, but still 5 for 5 from behind the arc. I'm not sure if the guys can bring it up. I assume you can see us right now, John. There was a great Steph Curry moment, though, in the game. And it's a meaningless three-point shot late in the game. And I want to show this to you because this is vintage Steph Curry. Yeah. So, again, game's out of hand, right? Steph Curry puts up a three. You see four Serbian defenders. They're all looking at the basket, hoping to get a rebound. Steph Curry has already counted it. Yeah. Turns around. That's incredible. And he's walking down the court. That's Vic. incredible. I mean, this is the more this team plays ah. together, the more they continue to build continuity, the more they get more comfortable with each other. Just look out for the rest of the team. <clears throat> John, by the way, you did uh, tease when you started uh, your appearance here today that if you were going to be in the Olympics, you'd be the, the greatest cap catcher yes. uh, in the Olympic <laughs> pool. Is there a photograph of you wearing a banana hammock like that guy, or do we not want to scare America this early in the morning? <laughs> no, Craig, and there will never be a photograph of me wearing, of me wearing a Speedo uh, because I don't own a Speedo, and nobody needs to see that. But what makes me encouraged about being a – uh, a cap catcher yeah. is that you really don't have you really don't have to work out. So I'm going <laughs> to no get pressure, over here and get John. a breakfast. No pressure. I'm going to get a I'm going to get a breakfast sandwich at Dallas Airport and start looking up ways <laughs> that I can become a cap catcher at the, at well, the pool I, during I, the summer. I tell you what, if you're available tomorrow, I promise you we'll have a picture of you <laughs> uh, in, a, in, a, in a speedo, uh, just to just to brighten your day. <laughs> Somehow technology rears its ugly head in this studio, John. Somehow. You know, Victor, Victor, somehow, somewhere, I've got a doctor's appointment tomorrow morning. So you guys have, have a great show, guys. Hi, right, pal. Uh, thanks, uh, safe travel. See you soon. That's John Fanta, our basketball insider. And he's the play-by-play -play voice of TBT, which is at least like alumni of, of you know, great college programs coming back yep. and, uh, and playing ball, which is cool. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1, so check them out too.